So open your Bibles to Romans, the eighth chapter. And I want to give a special thank you to Minister Troy. Hey. Amen. During this council, leading up to this, and he, man, he's been, we got to change his name to Sawah Fair because he's been everywhere. I'm telling you, man, that he's, he's been everywhere. And, and Sister Hope, oh my goodness. Ooh, I'm telling you, I pulled up and she was here. I pulled up, she was here. I left, she was here. I came back, I was like, did she stay the night? Oh, my goodness. I tell you, we get some people that's faithful. Oh, my goodness. There's no telling what we could do. Um, so keep on praying. Amen. And for those of you that I just offended, pray for me that I get delivered. <laughs> the spirit of offense is in the land. Praise the Lord. Romans 8, chapter 8. 31 through 39. When you have it, you had a moment. I told a couple of jokes. You should have had it by now. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? We. Who shall lay anything? To the charge of God's elect. It is God that justifieth. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or peril or famine or nakedness? A peril or the sword. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Let's read verse 39 together. Nor high, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, Father, I thank you. And I give your name praise, Lord. I thank you because you, you love us unconditionally. And you died on our behalf while we were yet sinners. I ask you right now, that you would strengthen us by your word, Lord. You understand the frailties of our bodies. And we ask right now that you would touch us. Give us a mind to hear and a heart to receive. In Jesus' name, would you put your Bible to the side and clap your hands. <laughs> Give you glory. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Verse 37 says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I want to talk to you a little bit on the subject, more than, more. It is important to understand that the believer must come to grips that we are engaged in a spiritual battle. The Bible tells us in Corinthians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood easy to say that, not always as easy to agree, because it would seem 
as if all of our adversaries are all around us. It's easy to pick a fight with somebody nearby. It's much harder to deal with the issue when the entity is spiritual. I have found in these times the saints are becoming more and more natural thinking. I've been in the church now for 34 years and this year makes 35 the Lord spare me and I have had a chance to watch the evolution if I can use that term of the church in those times I am sure when I came in the church was less spiritual than it was before I got here I just listened to some of the old timers and how they would talk about the Shekinah filling the place and the church would become smoky. And many times uh, people point to the past as the pinnacle of what God would desire to do. But each generation is responsible for the temperature of its age. Amen. I hear people say, oh, if, if I only lived in the time of Jesus, well, you'd be just as weak then as you are now. But it's not the time frame that makes you spiritually strong. It is based upon the fact that you have decided to humble yourself under the hand of God Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's, that's a hard thing for us. Humility. Humility is a hard thing. Because all of us think we know. All of us have gotten it figured out. Amen. All of us feel like I am the pinnacle of what it means to be spiritual. Amen. I, I can tell. I, just little signs and each successive generation tries to throw away things that they claim hindered them from being more spiritual. It would seem like the, the question of bondages is always restrictions from freedom to do carnal things. If we could only wear this. If we could only have the freedom to go there, if we could only watch this, then then people would love the church if we could only pastor if you could if you could just you know you know just let us date each other more yes, yes, then I would be able to find a mate after I slept with fifteen people. Praise the Lord, because you know that's what you want to really do. Amen. You want to test drive all the cars. Amen. Come on, somebody. See, the reason why you have to put a speed limit is because everybody likes to speed. Amen. Praise the Lord. There would be no need for a speed limit if everybody was respectful. Come on, somebody. As we move further and further in time and get closer to the coming of the Lord, there seems to be a generation that has cried out, not, not necessarily to pray more. I'm, 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 I'm not throwing stones at nobody, but it seems like now the, the all-night prayer meeting is lacking in prayer. They have testimony service. They have song service. They have exhortation. They have praise dancers. They have flag wavers. They have victory marches, but very little prayer. Why call it an all-night prayer meeting? Why don't you just call it Jubilee Night? Come on, somebody. Seems like we're trying to get more carnal and claim we're getting more spiritual 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I'm finding more and more that the idea of being victorious in Christ has been replaced with can't we all just get along. There must be inside of the believer an understanding that God is expecting me to live right. Look at somebody and tell them you got to live right. Mm -hmm. I know, I know you're going to make some mistakes because we're all going to make some mistakes. But making mistakes and making bacon is different. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I told somebody when I come into your house and I smell bacon, you've been cooking. Praise the Lord. Amen. That means you've been cooking. Amen. And some of us smell like, <laughs> smell like bacon. Praise the Lord. We've been cooking. Amen. Amen. You know, you, 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 you fell one time. You shouldn't be smelling like alcohol. Come on, you shouldn't be smelling like weed. You shouldn't be smelling like cigarettes. Praise the Lord. You shouldn't be walking by you, you, you know, you reeking of lust. Oh, I'm talking too true right now. Amen. There, there must be victory in the life. We've got to come to a place that we have decided that we are going to walk in victory. And so Paul here writes this, this letter here, the book of Romans, uh, before he even got a chance to visit because he had found out, amen, this church was up and thriving. And he wanted to make sure he gave them some instructions to provide direction, encouragement, and guidance. He recognizes that there must be, amen, some key principles in the lives of believers so that they can walk in victory. Amen. Tell somebody you got to pray. Uh -huh. You got to pray. That's just, it's just that simple. If you're going to be spiritual, you got to pray. Praise the Lord. Amen. You got, uh, yeah, yeah, I know you, you said, well, you know, I, I watched the Bible story. No, you got to pray too. Come on, somebody. You got to pray. Come on. You can't. You, you see, I didn't get too much clap off of that one. <laughs> Amen. I, mean, well, I listen to my favorite artists all day, but you know that ain't keeping you. A song is not going to keep you. Praise the Lord. Amen. It'll make you feel good for a moment, but after a while, what's going on inside is coming right back up to the top. And so Paul talks to them on these foundational principles because he wants to make sure, amen, that they know who their God is. Even though he has not met them, he wants them to realize that I'm praying for you, amen. And I want you to know I'm going to come and visit you. It was during a time of relative peace Amen. It was prior to the persecution that was spearheaded by Nero. Amen. And it was uh, during a time when, when things were going kind of easy for the saints. Uh, he, he recognized that there must be some basic doctrinal understanding in the Roman church. Amen. Without that doctrine, praise the Lord, and doctrine just means teaching, without that doctrine, nobody's going to live right uh, until we come to some end and some understanding about some things. Amen. We're always going to make decisions that are contrary to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so Paul here Amen. Tries to bring them into conformity and tells them in chapter one that I am a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle uh, separated unto the gospel of God. Mm, he wants them to understand I'm here to declare him to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. He said, listen, I'm trying to give you some understanding. Christ died to separate us from sin. 
amen, to separate us from our lifestyles. I know some of you want to believe he died just to take you to heaven, amen, but if you keep on living the way you used to live, even after coming in here, you're still not going to heaven, somebody shout hallelujah. He says in verse 9, chapter 1, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son. He says, Without ceasing, I make mention of you in prayers. And, and I, he said, I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. Amen. There, there has come a time when the church has to become established. Look at somebody say, are you established yet? Amen. Are you established? Are you still being thrown to and fro? I'm saved today, tomorrow I'm backslidden. Can't nobody judge me up and down and up and down. Lord, have mercy. When, when are we going to get established? Praise the Lord. It takes four years to, de to get a degree. And some of you have gone through school. Amen. You've entered into your career of choice. And you've been in church longer than you were in school. And you've got more established in the secular. And you're still not established in the spiritual. Come on, say Amen. Amen. It shouldn't, you shouldn't be ready to backslide off of anything now. Amen. You've been around here long enough to establish some habits in God. Mm, you should have been around here long enough to help somebody else. Look at somebody and say, are you helping anybody else? Uh, he says in verse 13, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Uh, he says, for oftentimes I purpose to come unto you. Mm, he said, but I was hindered. He said, but I wanted to come that, the, that I might have some fruit among you. Uh, I came, I wanted to come rather because I wanted you to know uh, I wanted to establish something. Uh, I wanted to leave something positive with you. I wanted you to know that my apostleship was not about a title, but I was actually able to produce something in others because I have grown to the place of grace in God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, and so then he is speaking to the fact, amen, that the children, amen, of Israel and the Gentiles must all come to one conclusion. Uh, mm, one conclusion in chapter 2 he deals with the issue of that one conclusion mm, he says in chapter 2 verse number 1 therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judges for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself mm, he says for thou judge thou that judges doeth the same things after you have come in here a man and you, you, you judge them for being liars, and you judge them for being whoremongers, and you judge them, amen, for being thieves, and you judge them for drinking, and you judge them for smoking, and now you are still doing the same thing. Uh, he says in verse number two, we know for sure mm, that the judgment of God is according to truth against against them that commit such things. You got to know, amen, just like God is going to judge them, he is going to judge us also. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, he says, thinkest thou this, O man, that thou judgest them which do such things, and thou doest the same things, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? You've got to understand there is no way out. Salvation, amen, is available to deliver us from the world, mm, deliver us from the desires of the world, amen. But if we continue to be entangled and enthralled in the things of the world. Mm, God, amen, is going to judge us according to the same standard. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
And so then he says in chapter 3, what advantage have the Jew and what profit have there of the circumstances? Why, why are you saying this, Paul? Because I want you to understand mm, you have no advantage being baptized in the right name and filled with the Holy Ghost if you are still living like a sinner. Yes, 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 you got the right baptism. Yes, you spoke in tongues. Yes. Yes, but you've got to also change mm, your lifestyle. <laughs> uh, you got to come out of the world and make a decision. I am going to walk in victory. Somebody shout. Hallelujah. Uh, Paul here is trying to help them to understand in verse 5, chapter 3. Mm, but if our unrighteousness is continued, the righteousness of God. He said, what shall we say then? Is God unrighteous? No, no. God will not commend us while we are living unrighteous. He said in verse 6, God forbid, how then shall God judge the world? God can't judge the world for filthy living if his people are living filthy. God can't judge the world if the saints are cussing and the saints are carousing and the saints are lying and the saints are stealing and the saints are laying up somebody say get out of that mess get out of that mess oh my god god's gonna judge the world in truth and so then Paul here in chapter 3 wants them to understand that everybody has got to stand before God. Everybody's got to stand before the judge. And so in chapter number 4, he tells them then you've got to understand that Abraham was our father according or pertaining to the flesh. And what has Abraham found that uh, Abraham was justified by works uh, mm, he had therefore to glory but not before God uh, he said but what saith the scripture Abraham believed God uh, mm, can I tell you if you're going to live right it's because you believe God uh, what do you believe about God I believe he can keep me uh, mm, he can get listen he can keep your little temper uh, Oh, God can keep your mm mm in your mm mm. God can keep your mind in perfect peace if you keep it straight on Him because you trust Him. Shout hallelujah! Oh, my God, you've got to understand here. This is a faith walk. A faith walk brings the victory. And so then he says in chapter 5, he says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. If you trust him, you'll have peace. If you just leave it in his hands, you'll have peace. If you say, Lord, I don't understand. I don't know what you're doing, but I'll, I need this peace. I'll trust you. He said, therefore, we got peace through God, uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. What are you trying to tell us, Paul? To live right, you've got to trust him. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct thy path. I need to trust him. To walk in victory, I need to trust him. To overcome myself, I need to trust him. To fight against the devil, I need to trust him. Shout! Oh, shout hallelujah one more time. And so then chapter 6 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue to live a raggedy life that grace may abound? God! 
God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? If we're going to make up our minds and accept the grace of God, we got to trust him. And then we got to turn from things that are wrong. The Bible, the Bible teaches me here. We're buried with him by baptism into death. Ha, that like as Christ was raised from the dead ha, by the glory of the Father ha, even so we also should walk ha, in the newness of life ha, uh, you got to walk right ha, you got to talk right ha, you got to live right ha, you got to walk in victory ha, you got to be an overcomer ha, you got to know that God has put something in you to help you to be a victor. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh my God. And so then in chapter 7 Paul says that I've been having struggles for the good that I would do. He said I do not uh, and that which I thought I wasn't going to do, uh, that what I do. Uh, but he said, I realize uh, uh, there's a law working in my members. Uh, my members don't want to live right. Uh, my members want to live wrong. Uh, but how do I get free? Uh, thanks be unto God. Ha, that giveth us the victory ha, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Ha, I got the victory through Jesus. Ha, you may not understand it, but I got the victory through Jesus. Ha, I put that stuff down because of Jesus. Ha, I stopped going there because of Jesus. Ha, I stopped smoking it because of Jesus. Ha, I stopped drinking it because of Jesus. Ha, I stopped watching it because of Jesus. Ha! Somebody needs to get a hold of Jesus. Ha! Jesus in the morning. Ha! Jesus in the noonday. Ha! Jesus, 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 Jesus. Somebody need to call on the name of the Lord. Oh, my God. And so by the time we get to chapter 8, he says, there is now, therefore, no condemnation, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Let me put a pen there. If you are walking in your flesh, you're going to always walk with your head down. You're always involved with ungodly carnal things you are going to be condemned when you come to church instead of throwing your hand up high you'll be like this because God sees everything you do every place you're going he understands your weakness but there's one thing to be weak and there's another thing to be premeditated Mm, some of y'all got junk in your phone. Ha, you won't even get rid of it. Ha, that's premeditated. Ha, some of y'all already made a call. Ha, you plan as soon as you go out of church. Ha, mm, get together with that unsaved friend. Ha, that's premeditated. Ha, some of y'all, you've already made your plans. Ha, and then you're saying, Lord, forgive me. Ha, and what God is saying is repent ha, of your foolishness. Ha, you're sinning ha, with full knowledge. Ha, somebody said, Lord, help me. Oh, my God. Ha, and so Paul here is writing in this a sit down ha, in this a chapter because he wants them to be victorious. Ha, the word for victorious in the Greek is Nike. Y'all know that word Nike. Ha, Nike means to be victorious. Ha, it means to conquer. Ha, it means to triumph. Ha, it Anybody in here want to conquer? 
<laughs> it means to be an overcomer. <laughs> Nike, oh, somebody say Nike. <laughs> oh, I want to be an overcomer. <laughs> I want to walk in victory. <laughs> oh, my God, Paul is teaching here <laughs> because he wants them to understand. <laughs> in order to please God, <laughs> you got to be victorious. <laughs> Mm, you got to be a conqueror. Ha, mm, you got to triumph. Ha, you got to walk in victory. Ha, mm, and so then Paul here teaches these things. Because he knows that being an overcomer ha, mm, will get you ready for the world. Ha, Romans 12, 21 says, be not overcome of evil. Ha, mm, but overcome Nike. Ha, evil with good when they do you wrong ha, do them right ha, when they lie on you ha, uh, tell the truth on them ha, when they take from you ha, you give them ha, some of us ha, every time somebody does something to us I'm going to get you ha, you don't know when but I'm going to get you and it's seething down inside of you. Because you don't have any Nike. You don't have victory. But you need to say, Lord, give me the victory. Lord have mercy. First John 2.13 says, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome Nike, the wicked one. Notice he said, the young ones walk in victory. Don't let nobody fool you, young people. When Big Brucey got you upset, ha, you said, clink, clink. Ha, Lord, I'm telling the truth. Ha, you said, ain't nothing coming down this road. Lord, I'm telling the truth. Ha, now you in the church talking about, I can't close up the road. What's going on with you? Ha, you can walk in victory. Ha, Lord, have mercy. Ha, you got to decide. Ha, I am going to be an overcomer. I'm going to be an overcomer. Ha. He said, I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. First John 4 and 4. Ha. Ye are of God, little children, ha. and have overcome Nike of them, ha. because greater is he that's in you. Ha. Tell somebody greater is inside of me. Ha. And because great is inside of me, I can Nike. I can have the victory. I can overcome. I can triumph. The Bible says here in Revelation 3 and 5, he that Nike overcometh. The same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father. And before his angels. Nike your victory will send you to heaven. Anybody want to go to heaven? Get the victory. Should I get the victory over the devil? Yes. Mm, should I get the victory over the people? Yes. Ha, but the primary person ha, you need to get the victory over. Mm, Y'all know what their name is. Ha, I wish you scream the name of the person out. Ha, Joseph. Ha, mm, I need to get the victory over Joseph. Ha, Joseph is the biggest thorn I have. Ha, mm, I know you can get on my nerves. Ha, but Joseph wants to get into some nonsense. Ha, Joseph wants to not pray. Ha, mm, Joseph doesn't want to fast. Ha, Joseph wants to take advantage of situations. Ha, and if I can just get the victory ha, mm, over Joseph, ha, everything ha, is going to be all right. Ha, shall glory. My God, 
And so then, he says in verse 31, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? As long as the Lord is on my side, who can beat me? I remember when I was a little kid, I got into a fight, and the person's brother came. I was a little kid, the big brother came, and I looked up at him, and I started letting the other kid win. Not because I couldn't beat him, because I couldn't beat his big brother. But while I was letting the big one, the little one, get the victory for a moment, up stepped my cousin Nathaniel. And Nathaniel was bigger than the big brother. And when I looked back and saw him, I said, you in trouble now. I got my back up here. And y'all better hear me. When God is on your, you ain't trouble now, devil. I can overcome. I can overcome. Shaglow. My God. And so then he said he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Why, why wouldn't God? We might as well go now. Give me the victory. If he was willing to offer up Jesus, why wouldn't he give me the victory over some not mean man or some not mean woman? Y'all better hear me. He said, listen, who shall lay anything to the charms of God's elect? It's gone that justified. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. And at the right hand of God. And he's making intercession for us. Tell somebody. Jesus is praying for my victory. Sometimes pastor might forget. Mama might forget. But Jesus never fails. I don't care. He don't sleep nor slumber. He doesn't go on vacation. It doesn't slip his mind. He's praying for me. He said, listen. He said, who shall? I look. I wish you'd look to your side and say, who? I wish you'd get your best vowel voice and say, who? Oh, Lord, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, we're going through something. It's a trial in my life. Some of us, the first trial that comes and hits us, we fall out. But it ought not be because I got the Nike or, or distress or persecution. I'm under the weather. People are persecuting me because of my faith. Famine, oh Lord. I'm hungry, but I love God more. Man shall not live by bread alone, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted for the sheep as a slaughter. And then he said, nay, no, 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 no. And all these things, every time, every turmoil, every haunting, every pain, no, 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 no. I don't care what's his name, what's her name, 
I don't care what the sickness is. No, 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 no. And all these things are more than tell somebody. I'm more, more, more. And so then Paul, you know, Lord have mercy. He takes the word of Nike and he puts before the word Nike, Hoopa. And Hoopa means over and beyond. More and more. Somebody say more and more. Lord have mercy. He's saying more and more. And so he joins together the word. Hypo Nika. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Hoopa. Nike. It means overwhelmingly conquered. It means a surpassing victory. It means a decisive victory. What are you saying, Paul? I don't just win. I come all the way to the end. I remember when my granddaddy got in a fight with a guy from California. The guy hit my granddaddy. He fell on the ground. And he told my granddaddy, we from California, get up. We fight like gentlemen. And my granddaddy, he got up and threw up his hands. And he hit the guy. And he fell down on the ground. And he looked down. He said, we from New York and we stomp. Lord have mercy. I wish somebody would put the devil under your feet. Stomp on the devil's head. Some of y'all, y'all pant your Y'all point the devil. Pat the devil. I wish somebody would say, I'm going to over and beyond more and more. I'm more than a conqueror. I don't just win. I don't just win. I don't just get the victory. I stomp it out. I stomp it out. More than a conqueror. More, more than, more than, I'm not just a conqueror, I'm more than, Woo. more than, you know the great challenge? I remember Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was something. He would say things like, I want to eat your heart. He said, what do you want to do, Mike? I want to push this bone, the nose bone up into his brain. That's when you know you want to whoop somebody. I was watching Mike Tyson fight. Getting, he was coming to the ring. He had no socks on. He had all black. He had a towel with a hole in it. That was his robe. A towel with a hole in it. He's coming down. I don't know. He must have had a twitch or something. He's, that's how he walked into the ring. And he, some, somehow or another, he had a bald spot right here. And the other guy coming to the ring, he got his head down. That wasn't the worst part of it. The guy's wife was outside of the ring going, <laughs> You know you don't get your behind whip when your woman don't even believe in you. 
<laughs> His wife outside the ring crying. They haven't even announced the combatants yet. In this quarter, a dead duck. And Mike is walking around. But listen to me. The guy he was fighting was 25 and 0 with 25 knockouts. Did you all hear me? He was 25 and 0 with 25 knockouts. But when it came to that man, his woman <laughs> He had already lost. The bell hadn't even gone dang yet. And if I were to tell you to fight, and you go back and watch it, Mike barely touched the guy. He swung at him, kind of clipped him a little bit. He fell down. Then he had a terrified look in his eye. Referee got him up, checked him out, and Mike, guess what? Mike had an overwhelming victory. His victory was so thorough that before he touched the guy, he was already defeated. And what the Lord is saying, because that is the only place in the scripture where Hoopa Nikeo is listed. That I expect my people to have overwhelming victories. You know, you watch a game, it's the last three seconds, shot goes up, makes the shot, everybody jumps up and down. That's a victory, but that's not an overwhelming victory. Some of us live our saved lives just like that. Last second, back and forth, back and forth. I'm on fire, I'm backslid, I'm on fire, backslid. And what you're hoping at the last second, you can get a shot off and win. That's what you're hoping. That's what you're hoping. I'm going to take just before Jesus comes. Just before he comes. I'm going to get a shot off and I'm going to be saved. And what God is expecting. God is expecting you to be walking down. <laughs> he expects your enemies to say, oh, no, not her again. Y'all see, some of y'all don't believe that. You know, when the story of the prophet Balaam, Balak heard about them and said, I got to get somebody to jack them up before they get here. That's overwhelming victory when somebody got a plan afar off when you show up. Heard about it. Listen, the Amorite said, we already know y'all going to whoop our butts. Let's make a deal. The Philistines, when they heard, how? They said, what, what is that? Somebody said, that's those children of Israel down there shouting, and you heard what they did to everybody else. They said, well, well, well let's fight anyway, because I know they've been tearing up everybody else. Listen, God is expecting us to have overwhelming victory. Not just victory. But overwhelming, more than a victory. See, I remember years ago, I got to say this before I close. 
we, we, went, we went to the store. My wife was praying, and the Lord spoke to her. And the Lord told her, go to Marlowe's. Get whatever you want. Ooh-wee. Get whatever you want. We don't have no money, Lord. No money, no credit. No cash, no cards, no nothing. I didn't have bad credit. I just didn't have no credit. Y'all, some of y'all know what that's like. <laughs> so I had no, no money, no credit, no cards. So can't even get there. I got I to gotta hitch a ride. Now, if he had said go, just go, that would have been nice. But he messed around and said, go and get whatever you want. Get whatever I want? So when so I was walking around the store, I walked around like this. So when the salesman came, how can I help you? Well, I said, what do you like, honey? Yeah, well, I like that Italian leather over there. Yes, we'll take that, and we'll take that, yes. Yes, and we'll take that, and we'll take that. And he's just a right <laughs> Good commission. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's writing up that ticket, man. Huh? Like, we'll, we'll, we'll keep looking to see what we like, you know. When the Lord said it, you know, I went and put my little suit on, you know. I wanted to look good, you know, while well, I was picking out all I wanted. And at that juncture, I had one piece of furniture in my house. One piece. That's it, one. I had an entertainment center that had been given to me by my brother-in-law as a, a wedding present. So uh, he's filling out the ticket. We was walking all around that store. We was, I mean, we was in there for a while. Woo, we we just walking around there. Yeah. My sister-in-law, she was with us. And she was she was trying to steer us to the budget-friendly section. I say it like that. <laughs> you know that plaid stuff. <laughs> I'm not a plaid kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. <laughs> not a player kind of guy. At <laughs> least not on my my furniture, you know. I, I ain't knocking you. It's all right. Y'all can have play and all them flowers and all this stuff. That's all you Somebody got to buy that stuff. Y'all can have it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I like solid colors. Praise the Lord. Then the decor around it can be, you know. Y'all understand. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Get out of there. Y'all don't know nothing about that. That's that metropolitan in me. Get that out of here. <laughs> So we walking around there getting it. My sister-in-law said, get that over there. And I felt it. I said, oh, no, that'd be broken too soon. Mm-mm. Get that. No, no, I ain't getting that. Getting that. And the guy said, uh, uh, how you going to pay for this? I looked at my wife. I was like, uh, <laughs> true story, not a parable. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, I, I wasn't going on, on uh, assumption. Because I don't want to give you this story and then some of you go on assumption. Because you're going to look like a dummy on assumption. I was going on a word from the Lord. A word the Lord spoke that day. Praise the Lord. And he said, go do it right now. See, when the Lord tell you to do something right now, he's going to back it up. So he said, how you going to pay this? And I looked at my wife. And my sister-in-law said, oh, y'all got me in here. You don't even have no money. <laughs> Take it up all this man's time. But she didn't know. The word didn't come to her. The word didn't come to her. Mm -mm. And she got some great faith stories, too, so I don't want you to think. She, you got some of her own faith stories. 
This just wasn't her faith story. <laughs> That's why you got to be careful who you share your faith story with. Because faith sto- your faith story might cause them to cause you to unbelief. <laughs> she said, y'all got me. Y'all got me up in here with no money. You ain't got no check. Where's your credit? No, we ain't got no credit either. So we looked at each other and said, um, uh, go in the back and put it in the system and see if something come up. They went to, went to the back, put it in the system. We standing out on the floor, showroom floor, looking at the furniture. Mm, this is going to look good in the living room. <laughs> Italian leather. Mm, mm, mm. We ain't pick no junk. Italian leather. While we're standing out there on the floor waiting, we hear a shout, a laughter. <laughs> so the, the, the clerk comes back out to try to straighten his face up. Now he's mad. You know, you know, so and so, so and so and so wasted my time. No, you didn't have no money. No credit. Praise the Lord. Store is getting ready to close. Because the Lord said, go. I said, we got to get somebody to get us over there to Marlowe's now. So I looked at my wife. I said, what are we going to do? She said, well, let's just pray. Let's pray. So now we're standing in Marlowe's having a prayer meeting. Jesus, keep me near the cross. After a few moments, my wife said, Lord, drop somebody on my heart real quick. I said, good. This is before cell phone. Went to the pay phone, called the person up. And she said, the Lord has laid you on my heart. I'm over here at Marlowe's. This is how much the total price Now, mind you, this is, this is the early 90s. Furniture is a, it's a few thousand dollars. And a uh, person got quiet. Mm. 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 So let me speak to the, the rep. Put the rep on the phone. Randy got the rep, put him on the phone. After he got off the phone, he said, are you taking your stuff home with you today? <laughs> So what time you close, sir? Well, we close in such and such a time. I called up, uh, I think it was Deacon Cheney. Deacon Cheney had a, had a truck. Called him up. I said, hey, man, I need you to get over here real fast. <laughs> Got to get this stuff while I can get it out of here. Put it all in the truck. Took it home and set it up. Listen, that was... An overwhelming victory. We went from no furniture to a house full of furniture. In one day. What am I saying to you? God knows how to give us the victory. He knows how to do it. Now, the person told my wife, they said, she's on the phone. I shouldn't give you nothing. Isn't that the truth? Shouldn't give you nothing. This is the person the Lord laid on on. Shouldn't give you nothing. She said, but God spoke to me and told me to do this. 
Let me speak to the clerk. God will even make people who don't want to do it, do it. Praise the Lord. Listen, I'm, I, I got I to tell this. Many of us are living like God can't give us the victory. Come on up, ministers. You, you're living like there's a shortage in heaven. There's not a shortage in heaven. There's a shortage on earth. <laughs> you say, what's the shortage? Your faith has got a shortage. All things are possible to them that believe. He said, well, should I just believe God for what I want? No. You should go to God about what you want and say, Lord, here is my need. And I'm asking you that you would work in this situation. And I am going to wait for you. I'm going to wait for you. And listen, I'm going to tell you something. God has a way. God has a way. God has a way. I'm reminded. Of one of my friends, he was, man, he was strung out. He was strung out. And he was losing his family. I mean, it was his, his wife had already gone up to divorce court. And he said, man, these drugs got me so bad. He wasn't even saved. He looked at a TV preacher. He said he was getting high and he turned on the television. I don't know what it is, you know, people, people getting high watching preachers. Watching the preacher while he was high. He said, and the preacher was like, God can deliver you off those drugs right now. He was getting high. And he knew he was about to lose his family. And he said, he started crying. I don't want to do these drugs no more. I don't want to do these drugs no more. And the preacher said, just put your hand on the television. And God will deliver you. Now listen, it wasn't the preacher that did it. He put his hand on television and said, Lord, deliver me. That brother's been delivered from drugs for 30 years. <laughs> Overwhelming victory. See, see, some of us stop for a little bit, start a little bit, stop a little bit. A little bit, and do a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. No, that's not overwhelming victory. Victory is when it's absolutely, positively gone. It's so removed that people have a hard time believing you ever did it. Ooh altar's open, altar's open, altar's open. You need the victory in your life. You don't have the Holy Ghost. You need the victory. You need the victory. You need the victory. You need to come. You need to come. You need overwhelming Hooper Nike on.